<laughs> All right, guys. So uh, the first transparency I did was sepia, and I just kind of got a nice coat over. So what, it, as you can see, it's kind of bringing out that like you know, almost we're getting that mahogany look now. We're getting closer to getting a little bit darker, but the pictures I was sent was more of a cherry mahogany. So I have to do some red. So the next step is I'm going to do some transparency red into it, and then what I think I'm going to do is probably do some. Uh, leather tan in there so i think the other two colors i had which was the gold toner and chestnut i don't think i really need to use them because it's actually going to where i want it to go so uh once i start putting this red on there we're going to get that look going and then what i might do is more of a fine detail look i might go with the leather tan in some areas like you know crevices cr you know corners underneath and just kind of go in there um i thought maybe of doing a wash with the transparency uh leather tan i don't know yet we'll see you know maybe i'll do a wash over some of these areas in here just to bring out uh some more of the detailing at least underneath of it so we'll see how things go because i'm going to also do a duplicolor color clear coat over this too to really give it that sheen look like it's really uh, varnished pretty well and then kind of dull it down with some flat top, top coat but we'll get that a little bit later so let's get this red on there Okay guys, so as you saw, I did some, uh, you know, leather uh, transparency on here and I darkened up some areas and then once all that was said and done, I let it dry a little bit and then I went into the garage and I gave it a nice clear coat. And when I say I gave it a clear coat, I used uh, this can here. It's Dupacolor uh, clear coat. Uh, you can pick this up at any uh, auto parts store. Very potent stuff. Make sure you do it outside in a well ventilated area. I would never spray that here in this booth and I let it air out for a while. But as you can see I got a really nice uh, you know it looks like a light lacquer finish and everything uh, pretty much came together. Now you may ask yourselves why did I do all this layering? When you do layering in the uh, paints like this you really start bringing out a lot of stuff. So when you have the darker with the lighter and an extra lighter and then you transparency it, you take the darker and you make that darker and you just keep building and building and building. Now, I know some people out there could say, well, I could get this effect just by doing it on my first uh, paint. I'm like, well, you know, you can you do that if you really want to and that's how you paint. But I like to do this with layering. So as you can see, you know, we have a wood texture going around. A lot of stuff is popping out. You know, I'm probably going to do a little bit of a metal look right here like this is like a plaque, you know. Uh, I really don't think I'll be doing uh, much of anything else like that, but it pretty much worked out pretty good. And you just make sure you got to do all the woods the same, so I did all the chair work as you can see. And we just got a nice wood texture and uh, try to follow that picture as much as possible. Now, next step is I have to do the top of this uh, desk, which I'll have to use some tape and I'll have to do the, like, it's kind of like a grayish type of, like, pieces up top with like gold trim type stuff and that's pretty much it about the desk uh, I gotta put the chair together too I gotta do up the chair so once I get ready we'll kind of come back we'll do some tips and tricks on some of the other parts on that but more or less the figure is done uh, the desk is pretty much done now 
And just gotta finish up the chair and the top of the desk, some little detail work here and there, and we're ready to go. So uh, we'll come back when I'm ready to start working on maybe the chair uh, so cushions and the top of the desk. All right, we're gonna work on the chairs now. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, the chairs are red with a lot of like black, well, not really black shading. It's kind of like mahogany, like a dark brown. So that's kind of my goal. I really don't want to throw too much black into the chairs, even though in the picture sort of has some black in it, but I really want to try to stay away from that as much as possible. So I'm just gonna, you know, I just got this red here that I mixed up uh, from uh, one of the paints. Uh, I'm gonna just do all red and then I'll do some uh, mahogany or browns, transparencies in the areas that are supposed to be shaded, blue, you know, dark. And then uh, I have this golden uh, transparency here. They don't make this anymore. Well, they make it in high flow. They don't make it in the opaques anymore. Uh, so I have one bottle left. So I'll do some, maybe some black shading, which is a kind of like gray shading in some areas. And then a gloss coat it and then kind of flat coat it down because I don't want it to be too, too shiny. But I want it to have that pleather look. So it's going to be kind of shiny, but a little bit dulled down because I don't want to make it too light. I don't want to make it look like, you know, a candy coated apple, you know, that you would eat at a fair. I want to make it look like a pleather that you would see like in a car or, you know, on a desk chair type thing. So let's just uh, get to work on that. So uh, I added burnt umber from Model Air and it's exactly where I want it to be. I don't, I'm not going to add any of black into it because I think black will really kind of take away from the pleather look. And it's pretty much I'm looking at the computer screen while I'm painting and I'm looking at how that chair is done compared to this chair. And this is exactly kind of where I want to get it. And the way they did it in the chair from what I could tell is, you know, there's a, a lot of the stuff is kind of darker in those areas where you get darker around there. And I kind of just hit it in different areas just to give it texture and just to make it look, you know, whatever. I'm not going to go back in with any more red because I actually like it the way it is because it's not perfect. And looking at the chair in there, it seems like there's a lot of, you know, mess ups and it, like textures and all kinds of stuff. So I think I'm really good with the chair. So the next step is I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. Then I'll go into the garage. I'll give it a nice clear coat. I'm not going to go too crazy with the clear coat, but just enough to give it some shine. And then I'll uh, probably dull it down just a little bit with the Garage Kit stuff flat coat. And then uh, once that's said and done, start putting everything together and uh, get, it, get it done. I think the only thing I'll have to, have to do with this chair is the wheels and underneath here. And then uh, attach everything, and I'm almost pretty sure we're pretty much at the final stages. Alright, next steps on the desk is I'm doing the top. Now I'm following the one picture which got this kind of grayish top up there, and then it's kind of like this little gold uh, type leaf trim going around there so I'm going to do that next uh, I'm going to go out into the garage and I'm going to kind of seal this up with some clear coat and then I'll dull it down as you can see also here I did a little metal plate over there and uh, it's coming together pretty good uh, just going to have to I don't normally like using tape at all on any of my statues but because I know that I use car clear and I you know I, what it is you take the tape and you put it on like your t-shirt or your leg pants and stuff and then you put it on the statue so it doesn't really stick too well. Uh, this is just, you know, some really light masking type stuff. Uh, it was only going to work for this because I didn't want to have to silly putty it all around. Plus what I'm going to have to do next is once this is sealed up, I'm going to have to use tape again and do all the tape around there and then I could just hit it with the airbrush real quick and give it a light coating to give that gold leaf type look. And then uh, the uh, desk should be pretty much done. And then uh, just go and finish up everything else. Alright, so the desk is pretty much done. Well, I'm doing the underside of it now. So uh, you also want to make sure you do little details. So this is kind of like a metal trap door with a little button here, I guess. 
And so what I did is I painted that up. Even though when you flip it over and you're going to turn around, you're really not even going to see it. But just to know that it's done and it's there. So uh, I put on the sticker here. I made sure this was all sanded down. I got all the dust off. I, I uh, washed it all up. I dried it. So now I'm going to kind of try to make sure I'm getting all the air bowls out. So I use this uh, here for a lot of my packing. Whenever I pack tape and stuff, I always, you know, take it off. But uh, if I do it like this, I'm going to scrape it. So you just want to put on a... A piece of paper and just kind of make sure you're uh, getting it all out making sure it's going on there pretty well now the base is fairly flat but it's not completely flat uh, but this should stay on pretty well and you just do this because you don't want to scrape up this piece you don't want to scrape any of that you can use kind of any flat thing anything that's got a nice good uh, flat surface that's not too uh, rough you don't you, you don't want to use a piece of metal because metal might dig in but something like this you get them anywhere Looks pretty good. I'm not really seeing any air bubbles or anything. Uh, I'm trying to get off any of the corners. So, yeah, it went on pretty good. It's uh, lined it up as best as I could. It's like, you can tell it's kind of not completely perfect. Some areas kind of work out pretty good. Other ones don't. Uh, but lined it up pretty good. So, we're looking good. So, next I got to sign it and got a thing. I think I'm going to put some... Uh, rubber pads on there. I'm going to go get those and I'll come back and I'll show you how that looks. Okay, so I signed it. I put on my little logo sticker here and I put some rubber pads around here. Now, these rubber pad stuff, I got this from a factory in China. I'm in contact with them. And uh, when I was doing a lot of my head bases, I asked them to you know, how can I get these pads that you know you see on a lot of these pre-production statues. And after talking with them, they were able to get me a couple sheets, but this shit was expensive as hell. I mean, literally, we're talking a couple hundred dollars for a couple of these sheets. And uh, after all my research and stuff, you know, it, it just seems that, you know, they're going to rob you blind over there, you know, because they know that you can't get these over here. Because I searched everywhere I possibly could to get these type of rubber pads, and literally, it was expensive as all hell. But... Since uh, I'm only down to a couple of them left, I've been using like the edges, anything edges around here to still kind of utilize this stuff. So I could, you know, you still can use this stuff even though it's not completely perfect. So I cut off some edges here and I put some square pieces around here. So at least now there's some kind of a rubber pad underneath this. What I'm also going to do is I think uh, because this will be raised up a little bit, but this is kind of, this will go down pretty fat, hard because these uh, this base is very heavy. I might put tiny little pieces underneath the chair wheels as well, just to kind of make sure everything is still even. Uh, but at least, you know, under here, uh, the idea is try not to scrape the bottom of this as much as possible by putting these pads. I always try to do this with my customs and any statues, is to put some kind of pads on for people. So that's why I always include that uh, whenever I do stuff for people. Um, I do go over to like the Home Depots, the Walmarts and Targets and get those other felt pads that you can get. And they work fine, they're just as well, but you know, this is more of that soft kind of foam stuff, whereas the ones you get from like Home Depot are more like a felt pad. Uh, but they all work the same and everything. It, there's nothing wrong with, you know, using what you can get. It, 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 the idea is just to make sure the underneath the statue is uh, secured like this and it's not scraping up your shells. That's why I always try to put pads underneath everything I do. Uh, it's just an extra step. I mean, of course, this foam stuff, you know, if uh, you were able to find this stuff over here in America easier, it would be great, but you just can't. But there you go. That's the bottom of the base. This is the uh, little, little trap door here. Let's flip it over for you guys so you can see what I did to the top of it without trying to break anything. All right. And as you can see, I did the top of the base there as well. So everything's looking pretty good. Uh, base is pretty much all done, and I guess the next step is I'm going to finish up the chair, we'll come back, show the chair, and then after that, we'll do our final video. 
All right, guys, so uh, I got the chair put together just now. It was a little difficult. Uh, what I did was I took my time. I drilled in here. I drilled here, here, all the way around. I drilled in these pieces. I drilled in there. So there's a little tiny piece of um, brass rod going in each part with some A's. Uh, I would try to glue it, but the only problem is, is my glue dries so fast that if you glue these pieces down there, but then you try to line them up, the glue will start cracking. So I figured the best way to do it was to put a little dab of Aves in each area, let it sit overnight, and it should be pretty secured. Um, with something like this anyway, if uh, if I was to paint it uh, like as a whole chair, I probably would have went crazy and really did some crazy pinning and stuff. But the problem is you'd never be able to get in and around, and it's just easier to put it at the end. So it's just something that... When you do this, and you want to always, you know, pick it up from right here anyway. If you're going to move it around, you don't want to pick it up here, and you don't want to pick it up from around there. You want to get the, you know, heavy part in the mass. So you always want to grab something like that. So if you ever do get this kit, just be aware that you don't want to, you know, grab from here because this is very heavy down here. And even if you glue, you know, put some really good strong glue in there, you still could kind of pull these parts apart, you know. So you just got to be careful, but. Other than that, it worked out pretty good. I'm um, happy with it. So we got some nice wood detail. Like I said, I wanted to make the cushions more of that pleather look where it's not very, uh, you know, super shiny. And it's more of like that fake leather. So with all this detailing in here, looking in close, it really brings it out. Uh, and also, uh, one of the last things, too, I did with the chair was... Let's get back here a little bit. I did put little... I want to make sure I hold little rubber pieces, uh, felt pieces on the bottom of the, the thing, as you can kind of see. Just so uh, the bottom of the stuff doesn't get really banged up too well, so there's at least some kind of cushion back there. But, that's the chair. So, uh, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this uh, work in progress video helped you guys out and you kind of liked the progress and how it all went. Uh, we're going to come back with a final video and we'll have everything put together. Thanks for watching and we'll be back with some more videos. Thank <laughs> you.